My name is Mary Curran and I am the director and French hornist of the Whistleblast Quartet. In our quartet we kind of cover every part and every section of the orchestra and my instrument is the brass instrument within our group. Not many people want to hear about the French horn but I'm going to give you a very short little history about it. So of course it began as an animal horn in medieval times, even as far back as caveman times when people used to use it as a signalling instrument. They'd blow through it and people would gather and come from miles around. As time continued, the idea of an animal horn developed into lengths of tubing, just something as simple as this, like a hose pipe and they would have used something to blow into it and it might have sounded a bit like this. Very basic, but it was definitely the start of the French horn. As time went on, the idea of just a length of tubing was developed into something more sophisticated. The next stage that came along was the hunting horns on the French fields called corps de chasse. And also the instrument was used in battle to kind of warn the enemy or welcome the army into battle. Um, and the next phase was then the hand horn. Now I have an instrument that's a little bit younger than the original hand horn. This is actually a baroque horn, but it gives you an idea of how the instrument was developed. So it really just began as a brass instrument in very simple hoops and they had no control over the notes they played. They could only play the notes that were naturally there. And I'm going to give you an example. Uh, in 1710, Handel um, composed the very famous water music for the King of England at that time to be performed on the River Thames. And it was the first time that this instrument would have been heard in an orchestra in England, the closest to our country to date at that time. And they didn't put their hand in the bell which is what we call this area. And they had a slightly more fine kind of tubing, um, which we would refer to as the bore, the size of the bore. And it sounded really quite raucous. And I'll just play you the beginning of Handel's water music. Very loud and quite rugged. As time went on, someone discovered that if you put your hand in the bell, you could soften the tone. This idea then continued to develop and um, instead of um, just playing an open instrument, people discovered that they could create different notes by using a thing called hand stopping. So if I were to play you a scale on my modern horn, but I'm going to pretend it was an instrument from the Baroque era, I would use my hand to block the bell and to make different notes. So a scale would have sounded pretty much like this. Whereas nowadays the very same scale is a much more open sound and sounds like this. So the horn has evolved into a much clearer defined, noted instrument than the instrument it began. And people would say that the horn is one of the purest instruments that was ever invented because of the sound it creates. And it was only when the forte piano arrived in the 17th century that all the notes on instruments became defined as separate notes. Whereas before that, instruments like the horn created notes that weren't perfectly in tune because of the way they were invented. Uh, nowadays, the horn can join in in any form of orchestral playing. And I'm just going to finish by playing you the opening of Beethoven's Horn Sonata, which was written way back in the 18th century, but it would have sounded like this. <laughs> That's just a little bit about the French horn and um, I hope that you will like to research the instrument further. Thank you very much.